All right, everybody, what's going on? It's Thunder Shot, and this is our interview that we did with Christopher Sabat during the Bandai Namco event. It happened near the end of January 2015, if you're watching this in the future. Uh, the only thing I can say is uh, we're going to start out, and it's going to be on my camera. At some point in time, after he finishes answering one question and before we ask him the next one, um, my camera actually dies, so we, we're going to switch over to Dino, or we're going to switch over to Rhyme Style's camera. Also, you're going to see him. He's making fun of uh, R9, the, where R9 is holding the camera at. R9 is the camera holder in this one. Um, so he's, he's a really cool dude, really, really, really cool guy. And like I said, he pokes a little bit of fun at R9 in the beginning, but I left it in because it was funny and he's an awesome guy so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and leave his Twitter link in the description down below if you want to follow him because he's the voice of Vegeta, Piccolo, uh, Yamcha, a lot of other voices in DBZ along with many other animes and stuff so Bot's a super super cool dude so follow him on Twitter if you have Twitter and you haven't followed him already on top of that I'm also gonna leave uh, Rhyme Styles uh, YouTube channel in the description below because he's the guy mostly conducting the interviews and when asking all the questions and whatnot. And then I'm also going to leave Lucky Polar 9's channel in the description below. He was holding the camera. He went on me with a trip. Um, I do a lot of videos with him and stuff too. So be sure to check out all that stuff. And if you happen to be new around here, subscribe if you enjoy the interview. I do Dragon Ball Z stuff and things along with like Xenoverse, the new movie for Kats F, everything like that. So be sure to subscribe, like the video if you guys enjoyed, and uh, sit back and enjoy the video. Are you going to be filming this entirely on your penis cam? Is that <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you can hold it up if you want. No, no. Just, it's even shaped like, like anyway. Yeah, I'm it's just funny. easier to hold there. Is that a GoPro or something? Uh, it's it's like the a... Garmin's uh, version of the GoPro, oh, okay. pretty much. Action camera, yeah. A Gar oh. GarPro. Yeah. Okay. So, so, we actually had a bunch of people send up questions. What? That's weird. I know, right? Uh, and, it, and most of them were just like... Do Vegeta! Do Vegeta! Do Vegeta! Well, first things first, why don't you introduce yourself just in case people. Anyone out there who may not know. So, where's the microphone on this thing? Uh, uh, it's, it's in the back. You can't oh, it's screw embedded? It up. Okay, cool. <laughs> just making sure that you can hear me, okay? Yeah, you, uh, I'm Christopher Sabbath, I'm the voice of Vegeta, Piccolo, Yamcha, and other things on Dragon Ball Z. And I'm a voice actor. And he has a majestic beard. Majestic beard. Yeah, majestic. Beer. I'm from the. Yeah, I'm a. For the Mighty Beard Club. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a little stroke. Uh, okay, so first things first, since obviously it's the bottom of the event, and there were some games that you worked with. What is your favorite of the Dragon Ball Z games? What is the one you had most fun with? That's hard. It's hard to say. I Because from a production standpoint, it was amazing when we did our very first game, which is just Budokai. Yeah. Um, it was a game changer for everybody. It was. It was definitely. It, but then once they got to like Budokai 3, they were really onto something. Mm -hmm. Budokai 3 was just an epic game. And I might be one of the few people that actually like the Tenkaichi games. I think it's supposed to last year. Do you like Tenkaichi better or Bill Budokai? Uh, I, I was never. I didn't grow up playing a lot of the, the, the 2D kind of right? fighting games. So those games never really interested me as much, but I loved the first time where they took it out of that locked okay. camera to something where you can fly around. And it felt to me like the Tenkaichi 2, for instance, felt like a, like an aerial combat game okay. as much as it was a fighting game, which is pretty cool. And I think Xenoverse has a lot of that right. quality to it as well. So it's funny we're talking about Tenkaichi because me and Thundershot, Hi, I'm Austin. Nice to meet you. <laughs> we just spoke to one of the producers. We'll possibly bring back Tank H3, like the HD re release of it. That, that, would, would, be that would be incredible. You would, uh, you would like that. Oh, God. So yes. I want you to look in that camera and say, <laughs> Banda Namco, we want this. Banda Namco, we want this. <laughs> we want the game. Give us Tenkaichi 3, or else we will revolt. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so we're going to go and take a step back and just ask about your voice acting. Okay. What is it that got you into it? Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't even know what voice acting was. Right. I didn't even understand the concept that somebody actually was doing the voices for these things. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no internet back then, so I couldn't necessarily look it up or see some sort of video about it. Um, to me, like all the like the Smurfs just had their own voices. I mean, that's just <laughs> they came with voices. I watched it; it was a show, and they had voices. I didn't think much about it. But oddly enough, I got most of my experience in voice acting. Uh, from the telephone, mm -hmm. because unlike you guys, uh, we didn't have any ability to know who we were talking to on the telephone. There was no such thing as caller ID. We had one thing that, that eventually came up that was called Star 69. And it sounds like a perverted sex move. But, um, I grew up in the era. Yeah, yeah. So before Star 69, 
I could do whatever I wanted to. So I would end up just prank calling people all the time. Just open up the phone book, just calling people and prank calling and prank calling. Just really stupid stuff. Stuff that I thought was really funny in seventh and sixth grade, like, oh, is your refrigerator running? Like, <laughs> yes, like, you better go catch it, see you. Um, and then when Star 69 came about, I would I would still kept up the pranking. And if people would call me back, mm -hmm. I'd always go, uh, hello. <laughs> and they'd say, yes. Somebody just prank called me from this phone number. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was, that was probably my son. He's uh, <laughs> He's been going through a hard time lately, and he's just been acting out a little bit. I'll make sure I give him a good beating. And they're like, no, 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 no that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's, 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 that's cool. Um, so I never knew. I never knew I wanted to be a voice actor, but the voice I have now is, oddly enough, almost the voice I had when I was in sixth grade. But between sixth and seventh grade, my voice drastically changed from like this <laughs> wee tiny little hard voice to the voice I have now. I scared the crap out of my mom um, when I came down and said, hey mom, listen to my voice. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it, so I, I ended up going to uh, music school and I was an opera major for a little while. And my first year in opera, ma opera school at the University of North Texas, they were like, okay, so here's the things we, you really shouldn't do. You shouldn't go out late, you really shouldn't um, talk loudly or drink a lot of soda or smoke cigarettes or uh, do anything fun, really. You should just... <laughs> and that's when I realized, oh, this is not what I want to do at all. And then on the other hand, uh, I saw, like, I, I had what I imagined in my mind was like, like, DJs, lives were like, and like, I want a life like a radio DJ. And so, so many people told me to get on the radio, I'm like, I'm going to go do that. So I went to go study radio and film. I got to be a DJ for a while, realized there wasn't as much cocaine as I thought there was. And, uh, and then, and then I realized that radio really wasn't even as fun as I imagined it to be. I always thought radio was this thing where you got online, you got to say whatever you wanted to do, but by the time I got there, radios had been regulated quite a bit, so you just <laughs> read what was on a card. Uh, and it was around then that somebody uh, that I knew was working for this tiny little company that had four employees. It was called Funimation Productions. Yep. Oh, wow. um, and she said, hey, we're, we're working on this Japanese show called Dragon Ball. That was their first, their first project. Yeah, yeah, and I they cast me on that, and then everything sort of blew up from there. And it was really working on Dragon Ball was some of my first actual voice, like, character work. And the only other character work I'd done before that was just on commercials for radio stations and stuff like that. So I, I kind of was birthed into this whole industry in the most dramatic way. Because uh, everything else after Dragon Ball Z has been really easy. Yeah. <laughs> really easy. The question I have for you then is, how did you end up voicing everybody? <laughs> okay, there's a story behind that. Because some people are like, dude, why did you cast yourself as everything? Um, and it, so let me kind of frame this. When I first started working for Dragon Ball Z, working at, at, for Funimation on Dragon Ball Z, nobody knew that it was going to be successful. And in fact, Funimation was just a tiny company. Right. And they didn't have a lot of money. And Dragon Ball Z wasn't popular. And whereas there's shows like um, South Park and The Simpsons and stuff where they bring in their expensive actors and they use them all up in like four hours and their show's done for that episode or two. Dragon Ball Z took like a week to dub one episode, one a whole week. So imagine having to pay for expensive actors for an entire week as opposed to just two to four hours. It's a, it, they couldn't afford to do that. In fact, they couldn't even afford to hardly bring people in for four hours. So their rates were minuscule. They, people were getting paid nothing hardly to work on the original Dragon Ball series. And so when they brought me in to cast it, I called up the agencies in town, they're like, <laughs> no, we're not gonna send anyone over there. So I had to put out like ads in the paper. I had to go to like universities and put signs up in there, like they were having a giant casting call. So when we first did all the casting for Dragon Ball, we called in like hundreds, if not a thousand people to audition for this stuff. But because not a lot of them were actors, just people saw the paper like, I want a big cartoon guy. Uh, <laughs> We ended up with a lot of weirdos and um, not that many people. By the time we finished all that, we maybe had 11 people that were on our cast list that we felt that we could trust. So when we were doing the initial casting, my job was to help bring as many people as possible to mimic the 
original cast of Dragon Ball, which was a Canadian yep. cast, if you guys remember that. Uh, so the people who got cast originally were the people who could mimic those voices best. Mm -hmm. And I was, oddly enough, a pretty good mimic, and I was closer to a lot of these characters. So when they were pulling out all the names, because granted, I didn't make the final decision, right? This. I just helped them find all the actors, and I submitted myself where I thought I was applicable. So they go, yeah, we want uh, we want this guy for for Piccolo. I'm like, well, that's, that's me. And they go, oh, well, we want this guy for Vegeta. I'm like, well, that's me too. Like, good, two voices, and you're on salary, so that's perfect. Um, and, and so I think they actually kind of liked the idea that I was just on a low wage to do all this stuff. I was working at, you know, basically a $20,000 a year job uh, doing all these characters on Dragon Ball and just drawing my voice. But still, even with all that said, I was like, oh, wow, I got these voices. I didn't know that 15 years from now, I'd be in this elite <laughs> penthouse uh, like with celebrities everywhere and naked people and stuff talking to you guys. Um, but I had no idea how big Dragon Ball Z, none of us had any idea how much impact Dragon Ball Z would have on pop culture. So I was just sort of in the right place at the right, right. time. And uh, sometimes people go, hey, what's the best way to get into the voice work? I'm like, well, you need to move to a town where you know they're going to open an anime production studio and be the first person there. That's the easiest way to do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so moving forward. Okay, let's uh, move forward. Vegeta is probably your most legendary. He is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you have to choose between Super Saiyan 3 and Super Saiyan God, which one would you rather want to be? Uh, I'm going to say... Well, it just depends. Like, is Vegeta Super Saiyan God form just going to be him skinnier, glowing in red? Because if so, I don't want him to look like that. <laughs> if he, I hope that if Vegeta goes Super Saiyan God, it'll be something pretty epic. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely want him to go Super Saiyan God. My hope, my hope, is that you know, you know full well that they're releasing another yes. uh, yeah, uh, theatrical uh, uh, Dragon Ball feature. Mm -hmm. My hope is that Vegeta gets to go Super Saiyan God, and my hope is that he gets to go Super Saiyan God and crush Frieza's face. Yes, that's what and everybody That's what I really want to happen, because he was robbed yes. of his victory. Like, he was robbed at every point, he was robbed by somebody else. Even his own son got to cut up Frieza into a thousand bits, and he's just like, I could have done that, but I guess, oh, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot now. So now, put you, me on the spot. you just crushed Vegeta. What's your victory quote? Um, oh god, what's my, my victory quote? What would you say to uh, him if you're Vegeta, you just finally got revenge, oh man. you just crushed him? Uh, let's see. Oh god, what would I say to Frey? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it would be over at that point. And Vegeta would be cool enough not to actually say anything. Yeah, he'd just walk out. He'd just turn around and go, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I think Vegeta would go like, hm, ha, ha, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you probably uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I can think of a million things, but really, of all the tragic characters in the series, yeah. think about it. He's had the worst tragedy of anyone in that series. Like Goku, I actually don't like Goku as a character. <laughs> I don't know if that's because I play Vegeta, but I can't stand Goku because <laughs> nothing bad really has ever happened to him. He's like, oh, I'm dying, but it's okay. <laughs> um, Vegeta like, had his entire family robbed of him. His whole planet destroyed. His chance of being like the fresh prince of Bel Air was completely <laughs> robbed of him too. And then he had to be raised by the person who destroyed all these people. And then have like some dude who just bonked his head in a funky way to be stronger than he is. So I just And he's still cocky about it. And now we're back on the camera. Um, okay, so last question. Well, what? this is weird. It feels weird in here right now. <laughs> Did you guys change cameras or something? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Actually, do you know when that cut out? Uh, halfway through. I, I think he was finished answering everything. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 Uh, I guess the last question I have, and this is a, another fan submitted question: What is your all-time favorite experience in the Dragon Ball Z universe? What was your all-time favorite moment? Well, if, if you had asked me before Battle of Gods came out, mm -hmm. I would have told you uh, the point at which Vegeta is uh, has 
decided to go Majin, mm -hmm. that's my favorite part of the whole series, where Vegeta gives in to Babidi and and becomes evil again just so he can kick Goku's ass. <laughs> and and what's even cooler is that like uh, I, I love that he bonks Goku just over the head and, yeah. and and just steps off for a little while and then does something really epic. I mean that's that was by far the best part of the series. And then him finally kind of showing any sort of kindness to yeah. his son at all and then I mean that I think undeniably I think that's where Dragon Ball peaked because mm -hmm. between you and me I felt like the Kid Boo stuff the stuff that happened after Majin Boo and even the Super Boo and Kid Boo stuff it was fine it just wasn't my favorite part of the yeah. series I felt like it was a uh, sort of anticlimactic after that and I'm hoping that with the next I, I'm hoping that that GT is just not canon anymore. Mm -hmm. I've, there's been a We've lot been of We've been waiting for that to come out, and yeah. it's kind of iffy with Battle of Gods. I, yeah, it's kind of unclear. You know, who knows? It might not even be Pan in uh, <laughs> Videl's stomach. It could be a completely They did say yeah. him. <laughs> they used the phrase him when talking about the child. Now, they might not know yet or something like that, but they did use the phrase him when talking about the child. Was that in the dub? I believe so, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we screwed that up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, even, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, they call like, it him, and I'm like, Pan's a girl, but they just might not know yet and default to him, so I don't know how to take that. Wait, wait, wait. What? Do you remember when that was? Because I, I, I want to parse that out. Like, I don't remember that. I, I don't remember it's that. Glimpse right Oh, uh, <laughs> maybe she even says, uh... I know he's not even born yet or yeah, something, like, something that. like that. Oh, wow, we really messed that up, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Blame Toriyama. We know it's not even born, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps Pan, perhaps someone else. Um, dude, that'd be awesome if it was a dude in there. <laughs> okay. Super safe. I have, I have another question. So you went to opera school for a while? Yes. Uh, can you do like 10 or 20 seconds of opera? Film? No, hell no. <laughs> Why not? I got out of that school for that very reason. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason not... he didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. Cool, well, cool. thank you for taking your time out to talk to us. Uh, any last words? Where can it follow you at? Twitter? Uh, I'm at, uh, I don't know. I, I'm always, I, I, I picked a really clever, like, a Twitter handle and now I can never remember it. Like Chris it, underscore like, Sab at twenty four. It's like it's like Chris two four underscore Sab at sign or something like that. <laughs> so, no, it wouldn't let me use the at sign at the end. So it's Chris two four Sab at uh, Sab it, I think. Okay. I don't know. Figure it out. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not verified of course because Twitter just doesn't have a handle on that. <laughs> cool. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It was awesome. <laughs>